What's up, everybody? Mixer Madness here. Brett Mix here for a SmackDown review. Uh, the first thing I want to be done on this review is to mention the Vince McMahon stuff briefly. Just to get it over with, I didn't feel like making a video because I didn't think I had anything to offer on the subject other than the clickbaity type of material that you heard, the disgusting things that you all heard. The law will deal with it. Society will deal with it. A higher power will deal with it. So that's all I'm going to say about that. I don't want to wreck everybody's Royal Rumble season. Uh, and that's not... We look at wrestling as an escape. Escape from our everyday lives. We don't need to go into the horrors of reality uh, when we look at wrestling. This is Royal Rumble weekend. I want to keep it about that. And that's all I have to say about the Vince McMahon situation. With one night to the Royal Rumble, things are getting suspenseful. This is WWE SmackDown, January the 26th, 2024, from Miami, as The Rock says. I'll never say it like that again, but that's how The Rock puts it. So what's up, everybody? Brett Mix here just again. Uh, I'm inviting you to hit like and subscribe to my channel if you're here for the review. Get settled in, kick back, grab a drink, and it's going to be 20 to 25 minutes as usual, hitting all the spots with some brief analysis sprinkled on what needs to be analyzed. So here we go. Uh, as I said, stay subscribed, notified, and uh, let's sit, kick off this SmackDown review. Uh, the most exciting time of the year. Tomorrow night is my favorite night of the entire WWE calendar. And we got a pretty good lineup for this show tonight. I uploaded the preview a few hours ago. It was just about six hours ago. I apologize if it was a little late. And uh, before I get into SmackDown, I just wanted to go over my Royal Rumble uh, picks. If you didn't see them, really quickly, Seth Rollins, or Seth Rollins, jeez, my mind's on uh, CM Punk. Sorry, I said Seth Rollins. Uh, CM Punk throwing out Gunther was my pick for the Royal Rumble last. Gunther being the last man eliminated, CM Punk. I have Becky Lynch throwing out Bailey last. I'm actually thinking of that decision. I don't know if I want maybe Bailey throwing out Becky last, but no, I'm not changing my predictions. Becky throwing out Bailey last, Punk throwing out Gunther last, and then I have a prediction that the LA Knight will take the the deciding loss to Roman Reigns in the Fatal Four Way, and Logan Paul to retain the U.S. title. So those are my Royal Rumble predictions. If you missed them in the other video, just wanted to quickly go over them in this video in case you missed them. So this Eladio. Carry on, guy uh, who's friends with Bad Bunny, a singer, and friends with Randy Orton, uh, presents Randy Orton uh, to open the show. He asks, Orton asks Miami, what's up? A lot. Has he been up and reading the news this week? It's probably the, been the busiest week for WWE news in history. With Netflix, the Vince McMahon stuff, The Rock stuff, Royal Rumble stuff. It's just, it's been a crazy week. Uh, I'm just happy that I don't have a job on on YouTube of doing the breakdown of everything. I just talk about what I feel like talking about. This isn't my job, but uh, who knows? Maybe one day it will be, but I'm just happy that I, it's not my responsibility to dive into all that because if I did, there would be a lot of uh, bad language and a lot of bad stuff uh, to come from that. So it's a good thing that I like to look at wrestling as an escape, and uh, let's continue to do that. So Orton says that Reigns has held the title almost 1,300 days. And Orton says no one can stop the bloodline. They've had an impressive run, except for maybe me. Randy Orton says this as his voice has gone a little bit. He seems to have lost his voice. He says 15 is the only number that matters because tomorrow night he's going to be a 15-time world champion. He gets Randy chance. Orton says, how will we do it by beating Roman with the three most destructive letters in sports entertainment? And if you've been reading the news lately, those three letters might be WWE, but we're not talking about that. So this is the three letters are RKO. All of a sudden, Styles' music hits. He feels like being overlooked. Styles uh, says Aldis gave him a match with uh, Swikoa tonight and not him. And LA has stepped over AJ. Everything that he's gotten in WWE, he's stepped over AJ. AJ feels Orton should know better by now because they have history together. AJ says he's got a receipt coming to Orton. And tomorrow night, he will step over Roman, Orton, and Knight and become the new WWE champion. He says he's going to step over Roman, Orton, and then he goes to say LA Knight. And right when he says LA Knight, the music goes LA Knight <laughs> at the exact same time. That was pretty funny and cool. Knight has the crowd amped. He has them in the palm of their hands. He hasn't had an opening show promo in a while. So this is a big moment for uh, LA Knight. And he makes the most of it. 
He says to AJ Styles, ever since you came back, you've done nothing but cry. Where have I heard that before? We've heard that to, before to the build to the Royal Rumble 1997. Steve Austin said it to Bret Hart. Sure, it helps that I'm reviewing the Monday Night Wars, and I just saw that on an episode that I just recently reviewed. Uh, but uh, that's a saying that I've remembered. It's in my memory. It's in my dome that uh, I remember that line Austin used on Bret. But it's true. AJ has been the modern-day Bret Hart lately in that respect, from early 97 anyway. Uh, he says he's the crown jewel and uh, he's the biggest threat, so they're trying to soften him up for the Royal Rumble. Knight says about Aldis picking him to go up against Solo Sokoa tonight. Knight says that's what's going to happen with all the crowd saying yeah to everything. AJ then with a play, a play kick, a Pele kick to Orton and got the cheap, the cheap shot sucker punch or sucker kick, I should say, to Orton. That's the receipt he owed him. And uh, he warned him about the receipt. Knight watches uh, the back after his mic drop because he said he's going to be the champion and then did a mic drop and left. But then he walked up the stage and watched as Styles kicked out Orton. Basic opening segment. Only thing he didn't do was build to a match later. However, they touch on the segment that Knight and Sokoa are facing each other, so it didn't really have to. So that's how that opening segment ends. Pretty decent. Carlito with the LWO. I thought Roman, uh, before I move on, I, I thought Roman could have been a part of that, but then I thought, oh no, they're going to save him for the end. He's in the area. Why not make this one of the SmackDowns he appears on? Why they ha didn't, I'll never know. Carlito with LWO versus Santos Escobar. Santos Escobar coming off the ropes into a bear hug clap like Vader used to do to Carlito. Fans chant Santos sucks, and I'm sure he's just happy they know his name. We get a distraction early in the match from the outside as a commercial break, two minutes in, as expected. I always joke that if you want to watch a WWE match on TV these days, wait five minutes from the opening bell. Two minutes for the the commercial spot to come, and then two minutes for the actual commercials. And then after that, you get the WWE match, usually commercial-free after that. So if you ever want to watch a WWE match in 2024 on TV, Wait four or five minutes from the opening bell, and then you'll be smooth sailing from there on. on. I made a joke about that, but it's the, it's it's the sad reality of how they book the commercials. I mean, on a three-hour episode, I can see you doing that, but for a two-hour episode, no, you can get more creative than that. Back in the Attitude Era, they had a way of doing it so you never, unless it was the main event, get a commercial because the main event was like 15 to 20 minutes, right? So that's why they needed one. But in the Attitude Era, they had ways of made, making matches five to seven minutes with no commercials. So don't tell me in a two-hour broadcast they can't do the same. But there's just so many video packages they got to show these days that, 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 that it takes time. Back to seriousness in the ring, Santos Escobar got some near falls. A hurricane run off the top and then a sitting abdominal stretch. Uh, Carlito comes back with a spine buster. He's in control briefly. Um, the LWO fight with Angel and Humberto on the outside. A big brawl gets going. Escobar rolls up Carlito for the win. Uh, winner is Santos is an es Escobar at a time of nine and a half minutes TV time with the roll up. Probably the most predictable outcome. I wish I predicted the way he would have won just under 10 minutes with a roll up. I would have said that. I did say he'd win the match in my preview. Two stars and a quarter. Then they talk about the Netflix deal. They talk about The Rock on the board of directors. So many other stories grabbing the headlines that they really want a headline. Uh, they really want to look at any other story they can right now. And I don't blame them. Um, AJ has some words backstage in the club. Ask about what that's about. And he says, don't worry about it. All dark. Then we have a WWE 2K24 promo, which pumps me up. I'm really excited to play that game. I know I'm 36 years old, but... Video and video games should be behind me, but when it's WWE 2K24 and you got 40 years of WrestleMania staring at you, you get a little jacked, especially with the graphics they have these days. They, I'll be doing a video uh, game review of that, by the way. They do a video of Bailey and Damage Control. Well, calling them unstoppable is one thing. They lost the Survivor Series, and uh, she says the Damage Control could win the Rumble from as she could win it, and I'm picking Bailey to lose last, like I said. And being eliminated by Becky. We'll see how it pans out. They, she also said the Kabuki Warriors are going to win the titles tonight. Which I also predicted in my preview. I didn't get all my predictions right tonight. But these couple matches to begin the show I did. Kairi Sane and Asuka take on the chance. And Carter for the tag titles. There's actually they're build, been building up a decent. At least a decent division as of late. 
Uh, drop kick and chance and Carter double team Kyrie Sane to begin the match. Carter with a big boot to the face of Asuka once she's tagged in a face buster to Asuka. Chance is double teamed off the top, but Kyrie Sane broke up the cake stand. Sane uh, broke up the pinfall after the cake stand. Sane makes it a big save off the side. The after party then gets hit and a cross body. Sane and Chance go to the floor. Sane suplexes Chance spine across the announce table. Carter with Asuka and an inside cradle. Action everywhere in this match. It gets chaotic. Asuka tags in Kyrie Sane and she comes off the top with a savage elbow drop. The insane elbow. And that's how it gets it done at seven and a half minutes. The Kabuki Warriors win that sprint of a match and are the new tag team champions. They're rated at two stars and three quarters. I predicted these ladies to win the titles and Escobar. So I got two out of two right so far. Hopefully, I can take my winning streak into the Royal Rumble and get that right as well. But I also predicted Hayes and Knight to win, and we'll get to that. One of the two did come true, but I got one wrong, so we'll go over that. Heyman begs Solo to fix the problem backstage and don't be merciful in his match with LA Knight. Yeah, and then all he has to say is, okay. Like, I think they've been booking Solo like a badass promo-wise because he just has these short little statements to make, like, oh, like I'm going to get it done, or okay. But winning-wise, that's another story. And it's a shame because John Cena did the job. And I'm sure if John Cena would see the booking Solo Sokoa has been getting ever since then, he might have thought twice about doing the job. But that's just how Cena is. He even cut a big backstage promo to Jimmy Uso, telling him to seize the moment and win the Rumble. There you go. Make more people in the mid-card look like they could win the Rumble. The way they do that is great because then you have more candidates. Even though we know it's not going to be Jimmy Uso, they still, it, it's a great way to get, I would have had The Miz on Raw do it. I would have had a couple other people do it on Raw. But at least they have had some people do it this year, like Lashley, Priest, uh, Jimmy Uso tonight, uh, Jey Uso. They've had a few people say it other than the Cody, Gunther, CM Punk, three favorites. Speaking of Lashley, out come the Street Profits and Lashley for their face-to-face -face with the final testament. In my preview tonight or today, I mentioned that sometimes less is more. And if, if you can't talk on the microphone, especially on the live TV, uh, maybe it should be protected. But Paul Ellering's in their stable and he can talk. He obviously, Paul Ellering of the Legion of Doom, the Road Warriors old manager, he's now their manager. And we know a, a, a come and Razor, I think those are their names, the Authors of Pain. Akum and Razor, uh, we, they're the muscle. Ellering's the, the voice. Cross is the leader. And Scarlet's the, you know, the beauty. Uh, so they have a nice rounded stable to the final testament. Um, in my, yeah, I, I mentioned that if, if they to highlight their tributes, if, if they have, if their talking is what's dominant, then highlight their talking. Uh, first impressions are so important, and uh, they did cut a pretty decent segment. Hulk Hogan cuts a promo for the Rumble. That's the second different one we have had this week from Hogan. I would I would be down for a Hulk Hogan cameo in the Royal Rumble. Why not? He's from the Tampa Bay area. Uh, maybe we'll see Hollywood Hogan in the Rumble or Hulk Hogan. I, I know we can't do a match, but just to see him throw a few punches, maybe an elimination with a punch, and uh, and then the elimination where he got eliminated without hurting himself. That would be epic. Just an idea. Not my idea. Hogan teased it on Raw. Um, Bailey and Bianca are making their picks. Bianca was happy and Bailey not so much. So that tells us that Bailey is going to probably have a long night in the Rumble match. Maybe a chance at breaking Rhea's record if she starts the thing off. Maybe she's number three or four. We'll see. That's how it looked anyway. Belair was a little bit happy so maybe she comes in in the middle of the rumble near the end in the 20 in the 20 section 20 doesn't the number like 18 to 21 that average number of 20 ella ring says there is no fear in cross cross gets good heel heat and lashley said cross was lying because they would they would have a fight they gotta stop using that line about these fans came here for a fight so many people seth rollins becky lynch bobby lashley they, they just stop that line it's, it's okay if it's said once in a while, but everyone says it. It's good as they highlighted their leader, their woman, the muscle, the, again, their voice. So the final testament did a good job. It was a simple segment, but effective. You want to do too much and you don't want to do too little. I thought they hit it uh, out of the park uh, as far as what they should have done uh, lengthwise. I'm impressed by the final testament. I think they could actually be something. SmackDown's Judgment Day, right? Uh, Jim Uso selects his ball backstage. 
and uh, we got the Rock's daughter. I forgot to mention the newest and youngest GM of in WWE history. Uh, we'll see if she can get better on the mic. She's not terrible, but she doesn't. It does she have the it factor? That's what we need to know. So, well, that remains to be seen. Being a GM, she even said tonight, got any advice to Nick Aldis? Well, if that's a shoot, I'm sure he does have advice for her. But she's working with the top people in WWE. She's the Rock's daughter. She's going to get all the best people in her ear. So it's up to her to grab those that advice from the best people in her ear and run with it. And we'll see if how she does. I don't review NXT, but maybe I can think about doing that soon enough. Austin Theory versus Carmelo Hayes. This match is a rematch of a match that happened a couple weeks ago due to uh, Grayson Waller, uh, the the bump that went wrong. After a sprint of a match, an inside cradle does it for Theory over Hayes. Then Trick Williams comes back and joins Hayes for a little bit as the crowd go crazy. Rated the sprint two stars. They go over the rumble card after that. Caleb Braxton is with Eladio Carrion, and he picks Orton as the Rumble winner, and he's wearing that Daddy's Back shirt or Daddy's Home. Not sure. It's that Daddy something. Daddy's Home or Daddy's Back. I knew they'd make a TV shirt out of that. So LA Knight takes on Solo Sokoa. We, we go with the match that neither men can afford to lose, but the WWE surely booked it. They sure have enough uh, faith in Randy. as The crowd cheered his name earlier in the night loudly. He's probably the favorite next to LA Knight. I'd say that actually it's tied. They, they, they probably have just as much fan support. I'm not sure who's going to get the most cheers tomorrow night, but it'll be interesting to see. Solo Sokoa has his orders to not be merciful and to fix the problem, as Cole reminds us. That was from straight from the Wiseman Paul Heyman's mouth earlier in the night. Knight with some arm work and some yeah bumps to Solo Sokoa on the outside. Knight with a succession of clotheslines and a side rush and leg sweep. The WWE fans firmly behind the megastar as he hits a running knee into the head of Sokoa. Uso gets a right hand too. Someone won't spike is countered by a DDT. The fans are behind him as clotheslines Solo Sokoa to the floor. Sokoa may be put through a table, perhaps, as Knight questions it and looks at the audience in a way as to say, should I put this guy through the table? A bunch of yeah bumps headfirst into the table. A high knee to the head of Solo Sokoa outside of the ring. Styles breaks it off, though, off the barricade with a phenomenal forearm, so it disqualifies LA Knight. So I got the Camaro Hayes losing match prediction wrong, but I got the Knight winning, but I didn't see it being by DQ. I sh- probably should have because neither man could get the point pinfall loss. But, yeah, at least I got the prediction right with Knight winning anyway. Knight by DQ so as Styles comes off, and we get a bunch of wrestling after the match. Both Knight and Sokoa don't actually lose here, which is the good news. Styles with his phenomenal forearm. Uh, Uso was thinking of doing something with the chair, but then he puts it down as Styles looked at him and as the fans laughed. And he said, go ahead, dog, you do your thing to Styles. Styles is like, okay, and then hits him in the head with the chair as he does Sokoa as he wanted to go to L.A. Knight right after that. But this gives Knight an out. He was going to be beaten by the chair, but Orton's music hits, and Orton comes to the ring, and Orton with an uppercut and a power slam by, to Uso. And the Viper is pulled out by Solo Sokoa. They brawl by the announce table. Orton fought back and hit a side suplex to Solo Sokoa on the announce table. Orton looks around, and there's a shirt for a fan for the, la- for the ladies as they all scream when he takes his shirt off and throws it into the audience. Orton gets Jimmy Uso, who slithered his way slowly out of the ring, and he gets a DDT. Orton can look strong going into the Rumble. Styles comes off with the phenomenal forearm, but a DDT to Styles as he counters. Orton then goes d- down to deliver the RKO, and he hits it and get Miami applauds. Fans chant Randy as the show is about to go off the air, but just then BFT... Uh, right by LA Knight. I rated the main event two stars and a quarter. Cole asks, is Orton going to be the man or is LA Knight? And we don't get an appearance by Roman. Again, Roman Reigns is in the area. They have the, why couldn't he have appeared tonight? They want to make his appearance a special, but shouldn't the go home SmackDown of the Royal Rumble, the second biggest show of the year, shouldn't the go home show that is one night before in the same area where Roman's appearing tomorrow night, Shouldn't that be one of the episodes? I mean, come on. They had nine weeks to build the Royal Rumble, and you don't put Roman on that show? Really weird. Overall, I rate the show out of 10, a 5 out of 10, because it was average. For a go-home show, it locked in areas. I mean, Roman is in the area. Why not have him? Pretty much the rant that I just said there. I wrote in my notes. I also thought they should have done a better job with Logan and Owens, but they didn't enough 
lead up in the previous weeks, I guess. Bailey and Damage Control had a big night with the video package promos and their title victories, the new champions. Orton and Knight also pled their case with neither of them getting the win, uh, the win tomorrow night. Neither of them will win, so it's naturally they got to look good in the end. So overall, an average SmackDown for Miami on this one, January 26, 2024. We'll be here for the show tomorrow night. Check back one hour after the Rumble ends to an hour and a half around that time. I'll have my review up for the first PLE event of 2024. Thank you so much for watching. So especially if you watch this one, hit like and subscribe. Give me a thumbs up if you really liked it. I'd really appreciate that. So I say my reviews are around 20 minutes. And look at that, 20 minutes. Uh, thanks for sticking around for the review. And we'll see you tomorrow night at the Royal Rumble. I'm Brett Mix, and I'm out.